Hello and welcome to this video on the Juno's user interface. In this video we are going to look at the following topics. We'll start by taking a look at the different ways to access the command line interface. We'll understand the difference between logging in as a root user versus logging in as a non-root user. We'll also understand the different CLI modes. We'll talk about how to navigate inside the command line interface. We'll talk about some keyboard shortcuts and finally we'll take a look at the amazing help feature from Junos. Let's begin. There's two different ways to access the command line interface. Number one is the out of band method. This is the method that you'll be using when you connect to the device with a console connection. So you would use the serial port on your computer to connect with the console port on your device. Now most desktop computers have a serial port connection by default but if you're using a laptop which does not have a serial connector I'd recommend that you purchase a USB to serial converter which is easily available on eBay and then you also download the driver for USB to serial or it's also called as USB to COM driver install the driver and then you should be able to access the console connection of your device with your laptop you can connect to the console of the device by using a terminal emulation program such as Hyperterminal. You could also use TerraTerm or maybe PuTTY. You can use any of these programs uh, to establish a console connection with your device. When you try to connect to the console, make sure you follow these settings. Uh, 9600 bits per second, 8 data bits, no parity, and 1 stop bit. That should be your settings in order to access the console of your device. The reason we call it as an out-of-band connection is because when you connect to the console of a device, your, your traffic is actually separate from the data traffic. It does not interfere with the data traffic. That's why we call it as out-of-band. The reason for using out-of-band connection could be initial setup. So you just unpacked your device and it does not have an IP address that allows you to telnet or SSH. In that case, for initial setup, you would use out-of-band connection. You may also use it for password recovery. So you, for, you forgot your password and you want to recover it, so you'd need an out-of-band connection. Or you could also use it maybe in case your device is not responding. Maybe you know the operating system got corrupted, no way to get into the device, so you'd have to use out-of-band connection or a console connection. On the other hand, for in-band connection, you'd be using either Telnet or SSH. And for that, Telnet or SSH has to be enabled on your device. So let me show that setting to you quickly. I'm using TerraTerm to connect to the device. My device IP address is 192.168.1.1. I'm going to Telnet into it. And it gives me a login prompt. And I'm now logged in. You need to go to this setting under Edit System Services. Once you're there, you need to have SSH and Telnet enabled for you to be able to use any of these to get into your device. So that's how you'd enable um, in-band access to your device. So when you use in-band access, you're actually accessing your device on any of the data port or your, your traffic is uh, also data traffic. Right? So those are the two ways to access the CLI. Now you may log into the device as a root user or as a non-root user. When you log in as a root user, this is how your prompt would look like and you would directly be placed into the shell mode of the device. You can identify the shell mode by looking at the percentage sign at the end of the prompt. However, if you log in as a non-root user, this is what I did right now, so I'm going to go to that tab here. When you log in as a non-root user, you get placed into you get placed into the operational mode. So let me quickly show that to you. Yeah. So the operational mode can be identified with the greater than sign. Okay, so two ways to get into the CLI. You can get in as the root user where you get direct access to the shell mode or you can get in as a non-root user where you get placed into the operational mode. The command line interface has three different modes. The first one is the shell mode. The second one is the operational mode. And the third one is the configuration mode. 
As we just discussed, when you log in as a root user, you get placed directly into the shell mode, which can be identified with the percentage sign at the end of the prompt. When you log in as a non-root user, you get placed into the operational mode, which can be identified with the greater than sign. Now, when you log in as a root user and you want to move from the shell mode to the operational mode, you would use the command CLI. I'm not able to show this to you on the device because I'm right now recording from a virtual machine which does not have a console connection to the device and so I cannot use the root command or I cannot use the root login. So I've used the other user credential and I've been placed directly into the operational mode. From the shell mode what you can do is you can use shell commands, Unix shell commands. From the operational mode you can use commands such as show, um, telnet, ping, so things that are used for troubleshooting, those kind of commands can be executed from the operational mode. When you want to move from the operational mode into the configuration mode, you would use any of these two commands. The first one is edit, so if you do edit, you can go to the configuration mode. As you can see, the configuration mode is identified with the hash sign or the pound symbol at the end of the prompt. So that's one way of getting into the configuration mode. You use the keyword edit. The other way would be to use the keyword configure and that way you can get into the configuration mode. From the configuration mode you can configure a lot of different things like interfaces, interfaces, excuse my handwriting, you can configure VPN, you can configure NAT, you can configure routes. So all kinds of configuration happens from the configuration mode. Right? So those are the three different modes of the command line interface. Let's talk a little bit about command line navigation. Let's first talk about the question mark. So now I'm logged into the CLI and when I hit a question mark, Junos will give me all possible combinations or all possible completions, command completions. Right. So right now from the operational mode prompt, these are the commands that I can use right now. The interesting thing is you can also use a question mark for a half completed command. For example, I'm going to use the keyword request, request, and then I'm going to use the question mark and then it gives me all possible combinations after the keyword request. And let's say I wanted to do request system and then I can again do a question mark and that way Junos will help me to complete the command. So that's the first way of navigating inside the CLI. The second thing that I wanted to show you is spacebar completion. So you can use spacebar to complete your incomplete commands. So let's say I want to do a trace route, I'd say trace, and I'd say spacebar, and it would complete that for me. So remember, when you hit a spacebar, there should be enough characters to uniquely identify the command. Only then Junos will complete that command for you. So let's say I just type in the letter S and I hit a spacebar then Junos tells you that S is ambiguous and it gives you all possible combinations after the letter S. So let's say I'm saying SA and then I hit a spacebar that way it completes the command for me. If you wanted to turn off this feature you can say set CLI excuse me set CLI complete on space and you use the off keyword that way spacebar will not work anymore so let's say we'll, we'll say SA again and I'm gonna hit the spacebar again and you see it gives you a space instead of completing the command but in my opinion it's always better to have that option turned on so I'm gonna turn it on now set CLI complete on space and now if you see I'm actually trying to complete that command with the spacebar it's not working so I have to type that completely so set CLI complete on space turn it on okay and now it should be working fine yeah it works fine the last navigation item I want to show you is the tab completion which works very similar to spacebar so it helps you to complete the command so let's say I wanted to do a trace route again I'm going to type in enough uh, unique characters and then hit the tab key it completes the command for you I also want to show you some keyboard shortcuts the first shortcut I want to show you is control plus A. 
if you've been a Unix user or a Linux user, you'll find these shortcuts to be very familiar. So let's say I have a command request system um, restart maybe reboot okay request system reboot and if I hit control plus a it takes me to the beginning of the command so remember control plus a takes you to the beginning of the command if I do a control plus e that would take me to the end of the command so control plus a is the beginning control plus e is the end of the command if I did a control plus w that would mean erase the word on the left. So I'm going to do a control plus W now. And as you can see, it erases the word on the left. Right? If I did a control plus U, that would erase the entire sentence or the entire command. So I'm going to do a control plus U now. And as you can see, it erases the complete line. So let's understand them one more time. Control plus A takes you to the beginning of the command. Control plus E takes you to the end of the command. Control plus W erases what's on the left side. Control plus U erases the entire command. The help feature in Junos is my favorite feature. It's so useful and it helps you when you want to find some information. There's three ways to use the help command. The first one is help topic. So let's try them. Remember the help command only works from the operational mode. Okay, so let's say I wanted to find out about the host name. So I'd say help topic system host name and hit enter. Interestingly, it gives me a lot of information. It tells me where I need to be in order to configure the host name. And then it gives me some related topics information. All right, and also tells me the name, the host name should be a value that's less than 256 characters. So just condensed information is what you get under help topic. If I wanted to get some more information like a summary, I would be using the help reference command. Let's try that. So help reference and let's say host name maybe. All right, so I put it as system host name. Okay, so you, you see this time we get more information. It tells me what is the hierarchy under which the command can be used. It gives me release information, so when was this command uh, first introduced? And it gives me a description. It sets the host name of the router or the switch. So as you can see, it's some more information compared to the help topic command. And the final one is help apropos. So let's try that. Help apropos system host name. All right, so this time I just need to put in the keyword. Yeah, and it shows me all possible ways to use that command. So I could use the command as help topic system host name. I could also use it as help reference system host name. And I could also use this command which contains the word host name, help reference system, system host name security. Remember the first one, help topic, it gives you um, condensed information about um, whatever keyword you're trying to search. The second one, help reference, gives you a summary kind of information. And help apropos gives you some other references like what are the different commands which can be used to get information about that command. So those are the topics I wanted to discuss in this video. In the next video we are going to look at some more Juno's user interface commands. So we'll take a look at uh, configuration modes. We'll take a look at the configuration modes. We'll take a look at the Juno's commit model. This is very important. We'll also take a look at how you can roll back with Juno's. So that's going to be the plan for the next video. I'm excited to see you there and I'd like to thank you for watching.